Welcome to this quick start for V-Ray for Modo tutorial. In this short video, we'll be taking a look at proxies in V-Ray. You may be familiar with the Stanford 3D Scanning Repository, which is a resource on the internet that contains high resolution 3D scans of real world objects. And what's particularly useful about these assets from our point of view is they're very dense in terms of raw geometry. So for example, this armadillo comprises of 7.5 million triangles, or the Thai statuette which is found here is made up of 10 million triangles. And these high polygon counts can make working with these files quite difficult, the main problem being input and output. Opening the files is going to be slow, saving the files is going to be slow, just because of the sheer amount of data that needs to be read and written each time. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to switch back to Modo and I'm going to open an OBJ version of the Thai statuette. You can see that it comes in at 843 megabytes. And as I open it, I'm going to also start a timer so we can see roughly how long the process takes. So at this stage, it's taken a minute and 15 seconds roughly for the opening dialog to complete but it also takes a little bit of additional time for all of the geometry to be able to display in GL. And finally, after one minute and 50 seconds, we have object open in our scene and displaying in GL. If I switch back to Modo, we can see that in the viewport, we've got 10 million polygons displaying. Now this is one 10 million polygon object, but imagine if we had three or four of them, then obviously it would take three or four times longer to open the scene every time we wanted to work with it. And every time we wanted to save the scene, writing all of that data back to disk would also take an extremely long time. So this is where V-Ray proxies can become extremely useful. So with my item selected in the item list, I'm going to go to the V-Ray menu and select convert to V-Ray proxy. It prompts me for a path, so I'm just going to quickly choose one. Select this folder, and then when the dialog comes up, I'm going to uh, combine everything into a single mesh, and I'm going to give it a name. And with that done, I'm going to click OK, and it's going to take a little while for the conversion to happen, so I'll just pause the video while this takes place. So with the conversion complete, I'm now going to delete my object from the scene, and then I'm going to go to Add Item, V-Ray Geometry, V-Ray proxy. And in the properties for the V-Ray proxy, I can specify a path to locate the VR mesh that I've just created. Once I do that, this takes a few seconds to load the proxy into the scene. And so with this item now saved as a proxy, I'm going to get much faster load and save times in this scene. And of course, working with proxies is going to have other benefits. I'm no longer displaying 10 million polygons in OpenGL, for example. The polygon count has been reduced by a factor of 10. One great workflow that's available with V-Ray proxies is the ability to convert meshes to proxies without actually having to open them in Modo first. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to disable this proxy and I'm going to go to Add Item and I'm going to add a second V-Ray proxy to the scene. And this time, rather than pointing to an existing proxy that's already been created, I'm going to use this option, which is to convert and load non-VR mesh geometry. And from that, I'm going to select this armadillo.ply. Now, PLY is Stanford's own native um, format. So that means that you can download these assets from the Stanford website and just convert them directly to proxies in V-Ray for Modo. So I'm going to set off this process and I'm just going to use the default values. It's going to point to the uh, directory that the existing file is already in. And I'm just going to let the process run. And the process completed in just a few seconds. And you can see that the proxy is now loaded into the scene. So I've made a new scene in which I've created four V-Ray proxies, each loading a PLY converted directly from the downloads from the Stanford Scan repository. And you can see that the scene is quite light in OpenGL. It's just under 40,000 polygons. And this means that 
navigating in GL is fast and fluid and there are no slowdowns. However, at render time, the final polygon count is going to be just under 30 million. So it's going to be considerably higher. So I've created a simple scene setup to do a test render with these items. I've added a V-Ray sun and sky to uh, my light. And I've also added a V-Ray fast SSS material to these proxy objects. And they're sitting on a simple plane. So I'm going to launch V-Ray RT and we'll have a look at the scene. So after letting it run for two minutes, I've paused V-Ray RT and you can see it's having absolutely no problems handling the 30 million polygons in this scene. And at render time, V-Ray used just under 3.5 gigabytes of RAM. So for 30 million polygons, that's very efficient. So you can see that if you're working with really heavy geometry, using V-Ray proxies is going to make your life much easier, especially in terms of saving and loading files and viewport navigation and just general scene management. And if I switch to my file explorer, you can see that my modo scene is only 55k. But the other thing that's interesting is that the VR meshes that are being used as V-Ray proxies are also considerably smaller than the original PLY files that they were created from. So it's a very efficient file format in terms of file size. So I hope you found this quick introduction to V-Ray proxies in Modo useful and thank you very much for watching.